Cubase Pro 9 offers many great enhancements for using the Mix console. Many people use a combination of the inspector and the full screen mix console and often use multiple monitors. And that's great, but if you're using a laptop and are working in a portable situation, it's not always ideal. Cubase has broken down different parts of the program over time into zones, and these are more clearly delineated in Cubase Pro 9. And you could toggle back and forth between your inspector zone, your project window, your VST instrument rack and media bay. And there's a lower zone that was added in Cubase Pro 8.5 for cord pads. And now we could access this by going to your setup window in the upper right hand corner or by using key commands such as Alt Control E on Windows or Command Option E on Mac. And now we could have our mix console tucked away at the bottom where we don't always have to fight different windows. It could be freely resized so just by grabbing the top edge. And one thing to be very cognizant of as we navigate between the different zones is the zoom operations. So if my project window, which we see, you know, the active zone indicated by the white border, if that's my active zone, just hitting my tab key to navigate between, my zoom control will only affect the active zone. So if I hit shift tab to go back, and make my mix console the active zone. When I hit G and H, that will be what is zoomed in and out as opposed to my project window. Now, many people got used to working solely with our uh, inspector to see lots of different parameters, but now I could have my mix console anchored here. Now we see the initial view will be our faders, but if I wanted to see inserts, or sends, I could click on these icons directly here. So this middle icon would be my inserts and directly below that would be my send effects. We can also have some integration with our inspector. So if I hit command option or alt control plus the left or right arrows, we can actually get to the point where we could see an independent anchor system for the particular channels just for the lower zone mixer. So if I always wanted my stereo fader to always be on the right hand side, we can just simply navigate back and forth and have the zones for this mixer or our larger mixer. So you can kind of work very easily between your different zones and have a really great way of interacting. If you wanted to see other icons at top where we could do our linking or different functions here for filtering channel types or searching for channels, we could turn on this icon and that will enable our icons that we see and are familiar with from our Cubase mixer here as well. To the very right is a little setup window and we could activate and deactivate particular functions. New in the setup is the ability to anchor particular functions to the left or to the right hand side. So if I wanted a particular function on the right hand side, I could just move it down or I could move it up and change the order as I see fit. Now many people are used to seeing everything in the full screen mixer and if you wanted to kind of bump up to the full screen, we see this little arrow here indicating uh, to the upper right and I could click that and I'm in my full screen mixer view and I could hit F3 which would open the mixer view previously to toggle back and forth between my full screen view and my zone view. One of the things that's always been problematic when people are working in mix consoles is there's so many different parameters and you can move one single pan one single plug-in. I could add plugins here. So let's say I want to add this plugin and I want it to copy or move this plugin. I could just do all this. I wanted to set different routing. Uh, I wanted to go to the overall channel parameters here. So let's say um, I just want to EQ this particular channel. So I could go to my EQ and adjust that. If I wanted to go to my channel strip, 
view. I could turn on and off all my channel strips for different functions. And I adjust my knobs and tweak my EQ, adjust my fader, my panning, all these different parameters. And then if you you know, have done something by accident, have totally destroyed your mix, one of the things that we wanted to do was now introduce your mix console history. So you can now just simply see a linear history of everything that you've done in the mix console so that you can go back to square one and be able to fix any mistakes that you may have inadvertently made. So we wanted this to be very musician and very engineer proof so that you could have complete control and over your mix so that you can work without fear. And this will be active until you close the project. So if you've ever just bumped a fader, adjusted the parameter wrong on a particular plugin, you could just go directly back with your mix console edit history. And this is also available in the zone view in the upper left hand corner here, where we have our undo and redo. So if I move my fader here, we can again just simply have these controls. I wanted to move this fader here, move that there. Let's move this. Let's uh, set up a quick link between multiple channels here. Bring that up and again just come right here and have my undo history all done. So as you can see, that's a very revolutionary feature. So not only the accessibility of being able to configure your mixer where you want it to be, but to have the freedom to work in an unlimited levels of undo within your mix history is a really great feature that will help your workflow and help you get better mixes in Cubase Pro 9.